Hi, I'm Chauncey Navarro. This is Inspired Word, and we're going through the book of the Revelation of Jesus. We're just starting chapter 4 right now, where we go into the throne of God in heaven. Uh, it says in chapter 4, after these things, now the word here in the Greek, metatauta, if you remember in chapter 1, he said, write the things that you've seen, that was what he had just seen in chapter 1, the things that are, and those would be the letters, you know, what was for the churches in chapter 2 and 3. And then, the things which you will see shortly after this, or, or hereafter. And that's the word metatauta that it uses right here that we start chapter 4 with. So this is that last part of that where he's writing the letter. This is all the things after chapter 4, what will happen hereafter. It says, after these things, I looked and behold, a door open in heaven and the first voice that I heard that was like a trumpet speaking to me saying come up here and I will show you things that must take place after this immediately I was in the spirit and behold a throne in heaven and one sat on the throne and the one that sat on the throne was like Jasper and Sardius stone in appearance and there was an, a rainbow around the throne that was like an emerald in appearance and around the throne were 24 thrones, and on the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their head. And from the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God which go out through the entire earth. Before the throne was a sea of glass like crystal, and in the midst of the throne and round the throne, four living creatures full of eyes, front and back. And the first living creature was like a lion, and the second living creature was like a calf, and the third living creature had the face of a man, and the fourth living creature was like an eagle flying. And they had six wings, eyes inside and out, full of eyes all around, and they rested not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is to come. First of all, John is caught up into heaven. And heaven exists on another dimensional plane parallel to ours. But he hears the first voice that he heard on the island. It's like a trumpet. That's the one, that's Yeshua that he saw in the cave there. And it says, come up here, and I'll show you things that are going to take place after this. So... Here's where he's caught up in the Spirit. And I believe he was literally transported to the day of the Lord, as he says, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Um, when you see Philip was transported, was in the Spirit and transported to the Ethiopians, you know, where, he, where they're reading the book of Isaiah, that he was literally transported there. Well, what you're going to start seeing as you go through this book is that John's there. He's seeing things. He's touching things. He's hearing things. He's he, he, At one point, he's given a scroll that he eats. So he's, he's physically, literally taken there. He's there seeing this stuff happen. So this isn't just a vision or something like that. This He's literally been transported in the Spirit to the day of the Lord. Now, the appearance of the throne that he gives you, and, and I relate a lot of these appearances, you know, I try to take the material from Ezekiel, from Isaiah, from a lot of these other Old Testament references on the way they're described and related to him. My outline here for the layout of the throne of God in heaven is based off of the layout of the temple of God. And I wrestled over some of the stuff a little bit on this for a while. So, because as you, what you see on here, if you go into chapter 14, where uh, of Isaiah where it talks about his throne being on the sides of the north well if you look in the temple on the north side in the inner court is the table of shoe bread and there are two crowns around the the around that table of shoe bread that goes on there that are the you know representing for the two loaves of bread and the oil that was poured over them. And so you have a picture here of both the Father and the Son on their throne and the Holy Spirit being in the in the jar of oil that's poured out for the anointing. And as it's described with before it being the menorah, the seven lampstands, um, which would be straight across from the table of shoe bread and the altar of incense on the right 
And it, what you'll find later on in the book is it talks about the temple being opened and them seeing the Ark of the Covenant. So here this is separate on it. Plus, the layout of the 24 thrones around it from, from Solomon's temple would relay out to the compartments around it, or you could even relate it to the tribes around it. But, but I relate it more to the compartments around the, the uh, Holy of Holies in the, in the inner court that where God had set those compartments in Solomon's for them keeping their artifacts, art, um, articles for doing the Lord's worship. This is just a, real, a layout to give you an idea for a layout on the throne. And I used a lot of this work for my paintings, and I still have more work to do. They're not as accurate as I would like them yet. Uh, so it's a work in progress, as you see these paintings that come through here. Um, but now going to the cherubim, the four cherubim around the throne. And we're going to touch on who the 24 elders are when we get into chapter 5. But for right now, we go to the cherubim. My cherubim chart here, this one is what I'm doing is I'm doing a comparison between the description that John gives here and the description that Ezekiel gives in the Old Testament in terms of the contrast between them. I like to relate to it in the fact that Ezekiel speaks of four wings, John speaks of six wings. Uh, John refers to these four faces, but Ezekiel for, refers to each one of them having all four faces. And I, in drawing this, I related this to the fact that if he had the, the other two wings, all six wings, but the two were down in front of the other two wings, you wouldn't see them, but you'd see the four faces. And if the wings were up, they would be covering the other faces, so you'd only see one of the faces. And that's what this chart's depicting right here on my cherubim chart in terms of describing the way these angels are depicted here. Plus, you're going to start noticing some patterns. Um, in the biblical numerology that you get going through here, um, There's you're going to see this pattern of four that's going to be going through this book right along with this heptatic pattern of seven that's going through the book. And, and it's going to relate to these. If you take the four faces of the four cherubim, you have depicted the four Gospels. In the first, the first living creature, the first cherubim, being the lion depicted in Matthew's Gospel of the King of Kings. As you go to the second cherubim, which is the ox, you see that in Mark's Gospel as the servant. And when you get to Luke's gospel, it's Jesus, the Son of Man, depicted in the fourth cherubim, or third cherubim. And then as you get to John's gospel, you get the eagle representing the deity, the godhood of Jesus in um, John's gospel. And so you can see this depiction of Yeshua in these. Also in Ezekiel, you have the depiction of the wheel in the middle of the wheel. And I like to relate that in terms of the fact that we are complete by ourselves, but... Yeshua also being complete is that wheel that's in the middle of us. And if you move him out of center, we become off balance. We become eccentric. And, and so that's why you have to keep Yeshua, Jesus, in the center so that we don't get out of balance. And I relate that on that wheel in the middle of the wheels with the eye. And the eyes all over, inside and out, that's depicting God's omniscience, uh, his, him being all-seeing. And you're going to see the, the relation to the eyes as well as horns and crowns and other things as we go through the book. And continuing on with chapter 4, it says, Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne forever and ever, 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before him throne, saying, You are worthy, O Lord to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they exist and were created now what you're seeing here is first you have the four living creatures who give honor to God and then in, in due process the 24 elders around the throne turn around they lay down their crowns I was a little surprised in the fact that their crowns are Stephanos conquering crowns and what surprised me about that was is I kind of made assumptions ahead of time before I looked into it more on it where I saw where Yeshua, Jesus, when he's coming back in chapter 19 has many crowns on his head 
but they're not Stefano's. I was thinking, okay, well, the mini crowns, this is all the crowns they gave him. Well, it's not. Their crowns are conquering crowns, Stefano's, like the crown of life, like the other crown, five crowns that you see in the, in the uh, crowns chart. And in this case, Jesus' crowns are diadems, reigning crowns which kind of makes sense. And you're going to you notice the difference between the Stephanos and the Diadems as we go through some of the different beasts in the book and like that. Uh, we have a lot of symbolic imagery, but we also have literal things that are going to be taking place that correlate with these. So I hope to see you back here at Inspired Word as we get into Chapter 5. Chapter 4 was just the, the lead-in to Chapter 5. Chapter 5 is very, very critical because the whole rest of the book is basically based off of this chapter and what's going on here is the reason for everything else that's going on in the rest of the book. So I'll see you back here at Inspired Word as we start chapter 5 in the book of the Revelation of Jesus. Thank you.